So I've just got back from my little test drive and I've not seen the video footage yet, but I guess there's quite a contrast. It felt so much different to drive. It's felt so much less wallowy going from side to side in the van. Welcome to Lindyvana. We're Gabby and Sam, and this is our four-legged furry friend, Basie. Follow us on our adventures in our self-converted Sprinter van as we document our time on and off the road, traveling around the UK, Lithuania, and the rest of Europe. Thanks for all of your support so far, and if you're joining us for the first time, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so you never miss a video. Hello guys, welcome back to Lindy Vanna. So in today's video, we're not actually on the road anymore. Um, we are back at home in Brighton. But since our channel isn't just about our travels, I wanted to give you an update on the van and the maintenance of the van. So we came back from Lithuania maybe a week or two ago and for the whole year I've actually been running winter tires on the van which although not illegal isn't ideal because they're really really expensive winter tires and I want to save them for the winter in case we go on a winter road trip. So I got myself some new wheels and tires for the van off Facebook marketplace for £120 and I thought to distinguish them from my winter wheels I was going to paint them black just for a bit of fun. All I used to paint the wheels was some very simple hammerite. Straight on the paint, straight on the silver paint. But first of all, I rubbed down the wheels uh, with some like emery cloth or whatever you want to call it. It's pretty uh, coarse stuff. It just scratches up the surface of the existing paint. And for any tiny little uh, rust patches, I just used a bit of wet and dry sandpaper just to get those worst bits of rust off. But you know, it's not a show car, it's not going to win any awards for the paint. There's a few brush marks in the paint, but hey, the whole paint job cost me 12 quid for the tin of Hammerite from Screwfix and 3 quid for a new paintbrush. I'm quite happy with the outcome of the wheels. Um, they, they look alright, I put two coats of Hammerite on so they should last me a fair amount of time. And actually, in hindsight, it probably would have been best to put that Hammerite coat on the winter wheels to give them a bit more protection from the salt and stuff in the winter. But you never know, maybe I'll give uh, the actual winter wheels a coat of Hammerite at some point. I did actually do a poll on our Instagram page to see if people preferred the silver wheels or the black wheels. And I was quite surprised. It was kind of even. Um, there was about a 35 to 65% uh, ratio of silver to black. So, you know, people prefer the black look. Uh, at least at the moment, and uh, I'm quite pleased with it as well. Unfortunately, I've got no footage of when I painted them. But yeah, as I say, I got on my Facebook marketplace, absolute bargain. The tires on the wheels that I've got, have all got about six or seven mil of tread. They're all really, really legal. Um, there's no flat spots on them. They're all worn pretty evenly. All four tires are slightly different tread patterns, so that's annoying. I do really like to run all four tires that are the same brand with the same amount of wear, same tread pattern and everything. Unfortunately, these aren't, but as I said, they're gonna be summer tires. They're gonna be used on the van in the best weather of the year. Um, so I'll save the winter tires, which are all matching for the winter. You can see these tires used to have studs in. There's the little stud holes. And when I bought them back to England from Sweden and transferred them over onto these rims for the Sprinter, when we got the Sprinter, I had to manually remove each, every single, one of these studs and I actually missed one or two that I didn't realize. You can see there's one here and you run these studs in the tires if you're in really, really icy conditions. Now, if we go on a road trip in the winter over to Norway, perhaps, or even over to Lithuania for Christmas, then I can buy studs and re-stub the tires. But I'm probably not going to do that because they're illegal in England, illegal in Germany, and I'm going to have to obviously be driving across England and Germany to get to Lithuania in the winter. Anyway, enough about that, I'm gonna give the van a wash. Thank you. 
Good morning, this is a new day. I managed to clean the van, got it nice and shiny, put the hubcaps back on the wheels. So uh, yeah, really pleased with how the van's looking. And I'm getting ready to fit some new shocks onto the van. So one of the main reasons that I wanna change the shocks is when you're driving along, the back of the van feels very boat-like. It feels like it's flowing all over the place, especially going around corners and over bumps and speed bumps and stuff. It's not very comfortable. And also when we're sleeping in the van, sometimes when it's windy, the whole van seems to sway and it gives you a feeling of a bit of seasickness, which is not very pleasant. So I've done quite a bit of research and from what I can tell, I think changing the shocks is the first thing to start off with. So the shocks I've gone for are the Monroe Van Magnum V1177. The V1177 being the part number that fits this van. But these shocks should be better than the original shocks that came on the van in the first place. And those ones have done 150,000 miles now. So these are sure to improve the ride. There's many different brands out there. There's Sash, Bilstein, Monroe. Um, yeah, loads out there. And these ones were the best ones for the best price that I could find on eBay. They cost 93 pounds and hopefully it's gonna be money well spent. Okay, so now I'm gonna jump under the van and go and fit the new shocks. The only tools that I think we're gonna need for this are a 21 mil socket, an 18 mil socket, obviously a ratchet, and then an adjustable spanner just because I don't have two 18 mil sockets or an 18 mil spanner. If you do have two 18 mil sockets, that will really help undo the bottom bolt on the shock. You'll also note that I didn't need to take off the wheels to do the shocks, which is great. It's so much easier just to get underneath the van and do them. But I did reverse up on our leveling ramps just to give me a bit more breathing space underneath the van. So welcome to under the van. The first bolt that we're gonna wanna undo is this bottom one. Once this comes out, it's much easier to take the top one out. The top one is only a bolt that goes into an embedded nut behind the bodywork. So you can't actually access the nut. So for that reason, I'm gonna undo this bolt first, drop down the uh, shock so there's not any sort of compression or uh, shear, I should say, on the top bolt, and then I'll be able to get the top bolt out a lot easier. Okay, so that was much easier than expected. Um, it came off pretty easy. Uh, so now I'm gonna do the top bolt. Okay, so weirdly, I've taken out both the bolts and the shock is just hanging there in midair. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll just be able to yank that out and hopefully it will drop down. You can see the state of this shock, it's unbelievable. It's uh, totally rotten. Yeah, well overdue changing. Really glad that I'm swapping it out. And the rubbers are all ruined around the bushings and stuff. So 
yeah, definitely time to swap it out. So now I'm just gonna put the new ones in the opposite way to the way that I took the old ones out. So the long bolt at the top first, and it really is a very, very long bolt. Be sure to be careful of your brake line too. So the top bolt's done up finger tight now and uh, I'm just going to move this into place and bolt the bottom in. I have to compress the shock a little bit to get it up into place. Slide the bolt through and do up your nut. Easy peasy. So that's the bottom tightened up. Now I can tighten up the top and move on to the other side. So yeah, I think you'll agree. <laughs> this obviously being the old one, it's well overdue. You can see there's been leaking fluid from inside the shock. And obviously the shock casing is completely ruined. I mean, it's just falling apart. So yeah, quite a contrast to the nice shiny new one. So I've fitted the uh, near side and now I'm just gonna do the offside. It's just exactly the same process as the one I've already done. Okay, so I've just done the other side. This was the offside. Not as bad as the near side one, but you can still see that it's obviously been leaking and that it's, uh, yeah, very tired. Super happy that I've replaced them with these new Monroe Magnum um, shocks. Well, I guess now it's time to go and drive the van and see how it feels. And uh, I've mounted the GoPro underneath the van again so you can see um, how it looks. I've actually mounted the GoPro underneath the van so I can do a before and after. Um, so you can see the way that the chassis is moving with the old shocks and with the new shocks. So I've just got back from my little test drive and I've not seen the video footage yet, but I guess there's quite a contrast. It felt so much different to drive. It's felt so much less wallowy going from side to side in the van. Um, I'm really happy with the, with the result. I actually quite regret not replacing the front ones as well. Um, there's a kit on eBay for £230 at the moment for all four shocks, these Monroe uh, Magnum, heavy duty ultra duty shocks i'll leave a link in the description below for them so there was the kit with just the two rears or there was a kit with the four the two fronts and the two backs and uh yeah i think i will get the front one sorted as soon as my bank balance allows okay guys so absolutely blown away with that really really happy with the difference that those new shocks have made thanks again for watching this video i hope it's been useful uh, do comment below if you found anything interesting. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Over and out.